Three years ago, I had never even heard of ulcerative colitis, and now I'm living with a stoma. My journey with ulcerative colitis starts in 2017. Life was pretty good for me. I was going into my final year of high school, I was head boy, I was playing rugby for the first 15, and I was doing competitive orienteering. I remember sometime in March, going to the bathroom and noticing there was blood left on the toilet after I'd been. I remember not thinking of much of it at the time and figuring that it would probably disappear in a week or so. But after two weeks of this continuing, I knew that something was up. So I booked an appointment at my local doctor's to go and see what was happening. The doctor's visit didn't bring much up though. And I came away with the instructions just to wait and see what happened. After a few more weeks of this happening, I went back to the doctors and the doctor told me that he thought I had hemorrhoids, although there was no evidence of this. After a while of more frequent attacks of bloody diarrhea and strong abdominal pain, I knew that I had to do something more. So I got an appointment with another local doctor who then referred me on to a gastro specialist at Middlemore Hospital. I saw the specialist in May 2017 and after telling him my symptoms, he told me that he thought I had a condition called ulcerative colitis, although he wouldn't be able to confirm this until he'd done a sigmoidoscopy and taken a biopsy. A sigmoidoscopy is a test where a small tube with a camera and a light at the end of it is placed into the large intestine so that the doctor can get a closer look at the tissues inside. The specialist explained to me that ulcerative colitis is the inflammation of the colon in the large intestine and ulcers develop in this part of the body. There is no known cause to ulcerative colitis, although it is thought to be an autoimmune disease. This means that the body becomes allergic to itself and starts attacking itself. After hearing the symptoms of ulcerative colitis from the specialist, I knew that these matched the symptoms that I was having, and after doing a bit of research, I was certain that this was the case. And sure enough, just a few weeks later, the test results confirmed that I had ulcerative colitis. After my diagnosis, I was prescribed a great cocktail of drugs to try and help me with the symptoms that I was having. Although I was still taking frequent, painful and bloody trips to the toilet, this was slowly starting to get a little bit more manageable. This proved to be a tough time for me. At that stage, I still had a very active lifestyle and my condition wasn't helping that at all. Living with a chronic disease is tough and I felt very isolated and unsure about things. Ulcerative colitis can be a tough condition to live with as it can be a very personal thing to talk about. I wouldn't even know how to begin approaching a conversation, telling someone what was happening to me physically and how I was feeling mentally. Being such a personal disease, ulcerative colitis can be a very confusing thing to know about. From the outside, I probably looked pretty healthy. The only physical change I was going through was the weight that I was putting on for my medication. This made it hard to talk to friends, Fano, and teachers about and I was struggling being able to convey how it was affecting my personal and work life. Being a determined and stubborn young teenager, I was determined not to let this stop me doing what I wanted to do. I continued orienteering and even helped take my rugby team to the finals that year. All of this activity on top of my extra duties as head boy really took a toll on my physical health. I started to get quite tired from doing basic tasks such as making my bed or unloading the dishwasher. My trips to the toilet started getting more frequent, painful and draining to the point where after a trip to the bathroom, I'd need to lie down for 40 minutes afterwards just to have the energy to continue doing what I was doing. And this was happening between 10 and 12 times a day. I was losing weight from fluid loss, but I was gaining weight from the medication that I was on. And it wouldn't be uncommon for me to gain or lose 5 kgs in a week. All of these symptoms continued to worsen over the next few months, and on the 26th of October, I found myself in the Middlemore Emergency Department. While I was in hospital, my condition dropped terribly, and I found myself struggling to even have the energy to make it to the bathroom from the hospital bed. While I was in hospital, I was put on both Infliximab and Humira, both really strong medications with the hope of trying to stop me from needing further treatment. After a few days on this medication, my condition still wasn't getting better, and the doctors came to tell me that surgery was looking like the only option for me moving forward. The surgery would mean that my small intestine would poke out through my stomach and all my waste would go into a bag that sticks onto my stomach. However, there was possibility for me to have the surgery reversed in the future. After a bit of research, I decided that this was going to be the best step for me forward. However, the doctors wanted to do the surgery the next week and I was in my final year of high school. 
In that coming week, I had both my senior prize giving and my school leavers dinner, which I was determined not to miss. So I decided to put off the surgery for a week so that I could attend these events. Those few days that I spent at home was some of the hardest days that I'd been through. I spent most of my free time just resting so that I could make it through these events. I made it through those events well, but looking back at some of the photos, I really can see how sick I truly was. The day after my leavers dinner, I was back in the hospital for my surgery, and after an emotional final sit down on the toilet, I went through to the operation theatre. My surgery went well, and I was able to have my surgery done by keyhole. This reduces scarring and also the chance for infection. After major abdominal surgery, it was important that my digestive system had a chance to get back going again. So for the first part of my recovery, I was put on a fluid only diet. This first part of recovery didn't go very well and I needed to have a nasogastric tube put in. This is a tube that's put into your nose, down your sinus and into your stomach to help relieve some of the pressure from your digestive system. Having this put in was one of the worst experiences I've been through. As the first time I was put in, I went into a state of sinus tachycardia. This is where your heart starts beating uncontrollably and I had lots of doctors rushing into the room panicking and sticking things on me to try and figure out that everything was going to be okay. I was quite confused at the time and ultimately quite scared myself, but thankfully I was fine. My recovery in hospital took quite some time as I had to regain the core strength to be able to sit up and even walk again. I also had to learn how to use my stoma bag and how to change it. It was nine days after my surgery that I was able to leave hospital. I was so excited to get home and spend the night in my own bed and spend some time with my whanau. However, I found at three in the morning, once again, I was lying on the bathroom floor, throwing up into the toilet. And by 5 a.m. the next morning, I was back in Middlemore Hospital. I was in hospital for another four days and then finally was able to go home for my recovery. I spent the next two months recovering at home with trips in and out of the doctors in the hospital with ambitions of attending a music festival at the end of January. Over the summer, I struggled with low energy levels and spent most of the time recovering so that I would be healthy by the time this festival came around. I was feeling pretty good by the end of January, so I decided to go along to the festival. I packed a few spare bags and made my way down to Raglan with a group of friends. The festival weekend couldn't have gone better, and I had a brilliant time away, spending time with great company and great music. To me, things couldn't have been better. I'd had gotten over the worst of my disease and I was finally able to look forward to having some control over my life. In February of 2018, I moved down to Wellington to study creative media production at Massey. I couldn't have been more excited to start this new chapter in my life and for the first few months, I spent time getting to know new friends, learning to live in a new city and just enjoying being healthy again. However, it wasn't long before my health started to deteriorate again. I started getting pains again in my abdomen and also found myself frequenting the toilet to pass blood and mucus multiple times a day. My energy levels began to drop and I struggled maintaining some body weight as well. So I enrolled in the local doctors to get some more medication to get these symptoms back under control. Although being on medication helped me control my pain, it sapped so much energy from me and I found it really, really hard to control my body weight. Being in a new city away from my friends and whānau that had supported me through my journey so far was really tough on my mental health. Up until this time, I had just been excited to get my surgery so I could have some more control over the day to day of my life. However, I hadn't had much consideration into how this was going to make me feel. I began to feel unhappy with the way I looked, unhappy with the way the clothes sat around my bag, and unhappy with the fact that I couldn't even control my physical or mental health. My health continued to slip, and I found myself in the emergency room at Wellington Hospital on a few occasions, coming away with a prescription for some painkillers and instructions to go and see my GP. After a few visits to my new doctor in Wellington, I was able to get a referral to the specialist at Wellington Hospital. A trip to the specialist and a colonoscopy revealed that the ulcerative colitis was still present in the part of my colon that was left. I was devastated. I remember thinking just how hard I had tried to overcome this horrible condition, yet here I was a year later, just as bad as I was prior to my surgery, and looking at needing another surgery. Having the second surgery would hopefully cure my condition. 
However, it would mean that my likelihood of having the process reversed in the future was a lot less. I decided that this was the best step forward and at the end of 2018, I was going to have the surgery. Having a light at the end of the tunnel and knowing that there was a chance of having some normality in my life gave me a great attitude to finish off the year and I was able to put some energy into my goal of becoming an RA in the halls. I was lucky enough to be offered a job and the prospect of being able to help others through that journey at university gave me a great boost of energy for the end of the year. I had my second surgery, a proctectomy, in mid-December and I decided to have this done in Wellington so that any follow-ups wouldn't require me to go all the way back to Auckland. The surgery went relatively well and I was in surgery on Monday, leaving the hospital on the Friday. Once again, I found myself spending the summer in recovery looking forward to a new year at university with a new job and finally to be in good health. With my downtime over the summer, I spent a lot of time reflecting over the past 24 months of my life. I had spent all this time worrying about my physical health that I hadn't really spent much time on myself. I found myself in a terrible mental state with no one to blame but myself. Having this time of reflection helped me realise how much time I needed to spend on myself physically and mentally. So I decided to split with my girlfriend at the time and focus on myself leading into 2019. Having this disability showed me just how valuable the time you have is. I learned to make the most of the situation and not to dilly dally on the bad things. I decided to stop looking at my bag as something that was stopping me and just to focus on the good parts in life. I charged into 2019 with a fresh outlook on life and determination that I was finally going to finish the year on a better state than when I started it. It felt amazing to work in a place where I felt that I could truly make a difference and I found great support and friendship in my colleagues. I finally felt that I was in a place where I belonged. I decided that I needed to prove to myself that I was still the Cameron that I was before my surgery. So in July, along with a friend, I set off to complete the Queen Charlotte track completely unsupported. The tramp went very well and I found myself coming back feeling very good that I finally accomplished a physical feat. However, I was very unsure of where I was at mentally and struggled to kind of find my feet in knowing that exactly who I was. I enjoyed my job as an RA immensely and I knew this was something that I wanted to pursue. I was lucky enough to be given this opportunity to return the next year as a residential life officer. This would mean I'd come back into the halls, lead my own team of RAs and help build community amongst a whole group of people. I was also lucky enough to be awarded a scholarship to attend a 21-day course at Outward Bound, an organisation which aims to enable self-discovery through shared adventure and the beauty of the New Zealand wilderness. I knew this was going to be a great opportunity for me to find my feet mentally, and I knuckled down for the next wee while at uni looking forward to this opportunity. At the end of August, I hopped on a ferry to begin this adventure. The next 21 days couldn't have been anything like I ever would have imagined. I was thrown into unimaginable situations from running through old navy stations from World War II to spending three nights alone in the bush. I had opportunities to push myself to the limit both mentally and physically through challenges I would never have faced without being on Outward Bound. I had opportunities to discover what excites me and what drives me to do what I do. And I had opportunities to expand on my leadership skills and discover new ways of working in a team. The final challenge of Outward Bound was to complete a half marathon. I was nervous, but excited for this challenge. The first 15 kilometers of this went great, but as I turned to make the final stretch home, I looked down to see blood coming out of my bag. I was determined to keep going and tried running along, but it wasn't long before one of the instructors saw the state that I was in and told me to stop. I carried on walking for the rest of the run, and even though it took me just a little over 50 minutes more than my original goal, I was very glad to be finished at the end. In just over a year, I had gone from 124 kgs to being able to run a half marathon, and I'd finally found my feet mentally again. I finished Outward Bound in the best mental state I'd been in years, and just before I'd taken off on this adventure, I'd met a girl named Meg. Riding this high of new confidence, I decided to ask her out on a date, and just four days later, I went on my first date in nine months. I had an instant connection with this girl and I couldn't be happier with how I was doing. Just the next week, I woke up on my 19th birthday with some pain in my abdomen. I didn't think much of it at the time, took some painkillers and carried on with my day. 
Later that evening, the pain still wasn't getting any better, but I still decided to take Meg out for dinner. From dinner we went to the movies, but by the end of the movie I was in unbearable pain and found myself again at the Wellington Emergency Department. I spent seven hours waiting in the emergency department that night before I was able to see a doctor the next day. After three nights in hospital, my pain was still getting worse and the doctors still couldn't figure out what was wrong. So they decided to take me into surgery to have the opportunity to have another look around and try to figure out what was happening. I woke up from my surgery with some more impressive scars and later found out that I had tissue in my abdomen that had become necrotic after being twisted up and losing blood. My surgery went well and I was able to leave the hospital next day and make a speedy recovery. The 2019-2020 summer was the first summer in three years that I had spent in good health and I was finally able to spend the time doing some things that I love. Going to music festivals, going out on the boat, and I even found myself with the time to start up a part-time job. Now I work in an incredible job being able to help such an amazing community. I have a beautiful partner that loves and supports me through everything that I do. I'm finally in good health and can start doing some more physical things that I struggled to do in the past. I have finally come to terms with living with a bag and how I look physically, but most importantly, I finally felt that I was me again. Ulcerative colitis affects around 15,000 people in New Zealand. Symptoms are often unheard of, hidden behind closed lips and bathroom doors. Not only are the symptoms extremely painful, but they can also lead to further complications down the line, including depression and colon cancer. It's important to understand that people don't have to look sick to be sick. My time with ulcerative colitis has taught me to value the opportunities that I have. Not to sweat the stuff that's bad, but to embrace the things that are good. To play with the cards you get dealt and live with the present.